What's up, ballers? Jacob here with the second episode of the All Drive No Drop podcast. Uh, thank you very much for joining me today. I did have a run in with a professional pickleball player over the weekend, so that was pretty cool. We'll get into that later, but uh, just wanted to give a little background of what I hope to accomplish with this podcast and why I'm doing it. Just have so much stuff to talk about uh, that I can't really fit into an individual video. And then there's some paddles that I'm just not going to be able to get to in individual reviews. I don't want to make it all gear specific. I want to talk about some different stuff. I'm not going to do news recaps usually unless it's something I really want to talk about. Uh, so I'm trying to bring something fresh perspective. I know there's a ton of pickleball podcasts, but you know what? There's only one, Jacob. There's only one all drive, no drop. So if you enjoy this, let me know if you're looking for something that uh, you think is missing. Also let me know. Always great to hear the feedback. But uh, I want to get into first my experience this past weekend. Uh, well, actually Thursday night. I had an experience of the – so there was a pickleball tournament, a invitational tournament at Wolverine Pickleball, a really cool facility in Ann Arbor, Michigan, multi-million dollar facility. I think it's only like a year old now. I've only been there once before this tournament, but it's really, really nice. They have a beer wall. Uh, you know, so you can go get your beer there, uh, very nice lobby, nice courts, nice, you know, just nice everything. Obviously you spend a couple million on a facility. It's probably going to be nice. So this was a tournament put on by Wolverine Pickleball and Smirnoff. They basically, it was an invitational mixed tournament, 4.5 and above a lot of teams above 5.0 there. Great action. We had 18 teams there. Free Smirnoff, free food. Unfortunately, I was feeling a little bit under the weather. Had a little bit of food poisoning that day. I uh, didn't even think I was going to be able to make it to the tournament. But luckily, I was able to make it there. Uh, I just wasn't feeling up to my normal self. And that's a big problem because I play a high energy <laughs> style and especially a mix. But I was able to uh, perform pretty well still. But let's just talk about how the tournament was set up. I'm going to show a picture here. They had this roll-on court that was very, very interesting. It was uh, like a Skittle rainbow color court that they rolled over the normal court. So I guess Smirnoff has been going around doing these pickleball tournaments at different facilities. Honestly, pretty cool that they put it on and you know they invite people. And they put it on for free. I think 500 for first place. So to have a free tournament... Have the free food, free drinks, high-level competition. Honestly, really cool. I hope they come back and do it again, and I hope I get invited again because it was a lot of fun. Uh, we had a pro in the tournament, so that was what I was alluding to originally. I'm just going to – I'll get right that I'll get right to that. So it is a senior pro, Ava Welsher. First time I've met her. She's from the uh, southeast Michigan area. I, I've seen her around before. I uh, never played against her, though, and then uh, after, you know, she uh, beat me, you know, pretty bad. Just honestly, if you if you haven't seen the pros play, and this was the first time um, I've pl played a pro, just the her ability to reset the ball and place it on just, you know, what, I, what would normally be a put-away shot for me, and she's just, like, you know, dropping dimes left and right. Very impressive. Uh, I did get some points. I did get some points that game, but you know, she she ended up be beating me on it. But she did not win the tournament. So, shout out to uh, they had a group two groups, you know, of nine teams. But anyway, shout out to uh, Ali and Lucia in our group, who I know that uh, ended up getting out of that group, and I think they ended up taking bronze in the tournament. They did really really well. Um, I want that rematch, guys. Anyway. So I talked to her a little bit after the game. I'm like, you know, got to gotta go, uh, you know, how, much, how often do I get to talk to a pro? And so I went and talked to her, me and my partner, Fran. Shout out to Fran also for playing in the tournament with me. It was a lot of fun. It was our first time partnering up for a tournament, uh, and we, we had a blast. So I was like, oh, you know what? Let me just go talk to her after the game. And so I get talking to her, and I ask her, you know, like, oh, like, how would you, you know, you play with that paddle? I said, I'm a, you know, I do – pickleball content on youtube i do reviews and that and that was able to actually spark a conversation because she was looking well she probably still is looking for a new paddle and i just happened to have the ripple uh the rhombus ripple r2 in my bag i played with the Spartus olympus i brought the ripple just because you never know you never know when you want to pull out the power the the big the big power uh ripple right anyway i said 
hey, I have one more game, uh, and she was done, and I said, you want to go try it? Uh, I, I think that, because she said she was looking for something with a lot of power and pop, and I'm like, well, the only thing I have is the Olympus and the Ripple, and I was like, if you want something with, you know, that extreme end, I was like, go, tr go ahead and try the Ripple. So she goes and tries it while I'm playing the game. I come back, uh, I, you know, at the turnaround, we're switching sides at 6, and she's sitting on the bench with the Ripple. I'm like, oh, wow, she, she only used it for like five minutes, so she must not have liked it. And, I, you know, I do a thumbs up, thumbs down, like, did you, did you like it? And she's just like, I loved it. I'm going to wait till you're done with the game. I want to talk to you. I'm like, oh, okay. I was like, well, I, f I figured, you know, usually if someone's done with a paddle after a short amount of time, then they, d they don't like it, but... I was like, all right, I was really curious, finished my game. I don't even remember the result of that game at this moment because, you know, it was the last game. I already knew we were going to get out of the group stage, so we're just out there having fun, playing our game. And I get back, and I start talking to her, and I was like, did you like it? And she's like, I absolutely love it. This is my paddle. And I was like, oh, really? I was like, just after that short amount of time, and, you know, who, who knows if, if she'll end up getting it. Uh, you know, just I told her it's not out yet, and, you know, I didn't want to go into the whole, oh, if you go get to Rhombus Connect and do this, this, and this, because she hadn't even heard of Rhombus before. But anyway, she really enjoyed the Rhombus Ripple R2. Take that for what it's worth, uh, you know, or if she starts using it. But uh, very cool to talk to her, uh, and hopefully in the future maybe I can bring her bring her on for an interview or, or bring her on for the podcast. That would be awesome. But had a, uh, had a great time meeting her. She's super, super nice. Uh, she it seems like she's going into the more of like a uh, a teaching in in Naples right now and taking a real br little bit of a break from playing, but overall super fun experience at the Wolverine Mixed Invitational Tournament. Did not play my absolute best, but played pretty well. Hung in there with some like five five teams. Uh, I have some few things to work on myself, but at my peak we did beat the third place team in our group really good. Beat them 11-3. So at our peak, when we were humming, we were humming. Obviously, it's all about consistency in these round-robin tournaments just to have the consistency there. And uh, honestly, my shot selection wasn't too bad. It wasn't driving everything, but obviously it makes you're going to drive a little bit more when you get the ball. Uh, besides that, had a lot of fun. Played well uh, as I could. And, you know, I hope that uh, they run this again. If you ever see the Smirnoff uh, coming to sponsor a tournament in your area, besides the, the Skittle courts, which they had yellow and orange on the court, that's very hard to see the ball on a yellow and orange court surface. But besides that, it was a ton of fun. They did a really great job keeping things running. Obviously, that's probably going to come down to your facility. Um, sorry, I forget the owner's names at Wolverine Pickleball. I believe it's Leslie and something else. Um, there's two uh, woman owners, and they are absolutely great at running tournaments at, for the two that I've been to. So if you're ever in the Ann Arbor area, go check out Wolverine Pickleball. Very fun. Okay, so besides that, that was my that was kind of my recap of what I what am up to, and then uh, I think I got another tournament coming up in October here. So that'll be a lot of fun uh, playing with Carol, who I usually play mixed with uh, in that one, and that'll be a blast. And then. Who knows what's else going on? We're about to start indoor season here in Michigan, so it's kind of tri getting the last uh, few sessions of outside. I mean, usually we can play outside till like you know, occasionally November, December, a couple days here and there. But I'll be I'll be transitioning to the inside pickleball life soon, uh, and we'll 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 be so you'll be seeing me play more inside, especially in the reviews and the gameplay sessions. Now, paddle updates. Let's get to that real quick and. We'll talk about what I have been hitting. Well, let's talk about what I have coming up first, and then I'll talk about what I have uh, already hit. So Reload, haven't done any hitting with this yet. I'm sure everyone knows what Reload is by now. Uh, it is the paddle that has the replaceable grip or <laughs> replaceable grit. So you basically peel the face up, peel the face off, and you can put it back on so you can keep refreshing that grit. So hopefully to play with that too. I mean, everything I've heard though, you know, it's just kind of a generic Gen 2 elongated paddle. So as far as performance wise, not sure what to expect there. Uh, but, you know, it's it's just going to be okay. Groove and Cruise, they have, these are Gen 1.5 unibody, uh, perimeter edge foam, but not thermal form. Uh, so they have three different shapes on these. And, you know, I haven't got to play them all, but I mean, 
solid paddles. They're a little bit more expensive. I think they're one thirty with uh, with the price compared to like the eleven six twenty four Jelly Bean and the Batic Prism Flash, which are at a, I think they're at a hundred uh, to ninety and then ninety dollars after the coat. So I mean, a little bit pricier. But if you want the shape, I mean, it kind of plays it, it, it plays you know what you would think like if you've played with the Prism Flash or the Jelly Bean, except it doesn't have that fiberglass layer like the Jelly Bean. Uh, and then coming up, we are going to be looking at the next gen Valor Pro. I've heard some good things about this, so excited to check that out. And then the Nexus Pro Star, we're going to check those out. And then besides that, Paddle Tech, as you can see behind me, we have the Inley Water uh, C and the ESQs. Those are going to be dropped. Well, the Inley Water is already out, but the ESQs will be dropping October 1st, I believe. So I have a review coming out on that either Monday or Tuesday. So keep an eye out for that. We won't talk about those here since I got a review coming out on them. Course Super Court. Uh, this one has been very fun. So they say that they're going to do a limited run, but if it gets popular enough, I'm sure they will keep making it. It's a wide body paddles. I think it's a 16 by 8 and then a 6.25 inch handle. It is just a Gen 1 paddle, but it has four layers. I think it's carbon fiber, fiberglass, and then two more layers of carbon fiber. Uh, honestly, very soft. Feels very good. The sweet spot feels pretty good for not you know, being thermoformed or uh, having any edge foam. I, the maneuverability uh, is really great. I'll have to get out and play with it a little bit more. I've only been using it on the Dink Master right now, so besides, you know, the just the dinking in hands, I can only comment on that. Real gameplay, haven't got that yet. Unfortunately, it rained today, and I was going to go out and use it this morning before I recorded, but Rhombus Ripple. Really hoping these are going to be, have a launch date soon so we can talk about them even more, but uh, yeah, people still loving them, and as I said, even a senior pro. Absolutely loved it, and she didn't know anything about it until I let her know. Uh, SLK, the SLK Halo Pro we have here. Played some games with this, 14 millimeter, uh, you know, Kevlar paddle. Uh, it's it's okay. It's okay. If you're looking for a 14 millimeter SLK, you know, something from Selkirk, it's fine. It's nothing special. The price is, you know, pretty good as far as Selkirk standards go. I'm not going to make a review on it. It's just okay. It's nothing special. It's probably one of Selkirk's better paddles, but, uh, you know, that's not saying a ton with a lot of the recent stuff. So I wouldn't go out of your way to get your hands on it. What else? Well, oh, one other thing. I did talk with Al Pickleball, and they have something pretty exciting coming up. So if you don't know what Al Pickleball is, they are the first makers of the like a quiet paddle that's actually tournament approved. And if you are looking to get your hands on that, I mean, it's you know, it's something I haven't hit yet, but they have something even maybe even spicier coming up in the fall. Can't share anything about it. It's still not officially approved, and they're in stages with USAP making sure that everything's good there. But uh, they might have something cooking, so hopefully I can get you something on that soon. That will be very exciting if what they have cooking is actually going to be passed. Now, I wanted to touch on something that uh, is, a, is, is something I've been kind of thinking about lately, and it's the unwritten rules of pickleball. And these are just – so I had some that I've been thinking about that I've kind of come into uh, – I've, I've come across in my play and people are like, don't you know this is what you do? Or didn't you know this was kind of like a rule, but it's, you know, it's an unwritten rule. And then also stuff that I've seen on, you know, just the internet, Discord, Reddit, just different things. So I have a list of unwritten rules here that I'm just going to read off. And then I'm just going to kind of say, like, do I agree with it or do I think, like, people need to chill? I mean, either way. If it's an unwritten rule and someone doesn't know, you kind of do need to chill because, I mean, it's unwritten. So you can only learn it on the streets of the pickleball court, right? So the first one, unwritten rule, I think this one should be easy to agree with. But obviously, we all know people that don't follow this rule. If you aren't sure if the ball is out or in, it's in. If you don't see the ball, you can ask your opponent if they saw it. 
But if no one saw it, or you just aren't sure, then the ball is in. I this actually might be an official rule in the rule book. I'm not sure, but it's it's really just an unwritten rule in life in pickleball. If you know, like if you're not sure about the call, you have to give the benefit of the doubt to the opponent. Um, <laughs> I always say sometimes this is a joke. This is a joke. Don't but go ahead and clip it. Uh, when in doubt, call it out. Some people actually behave that way. When they, when they're in doubt, they call it out. But when you're in doubt, you should call it in. Let's just so. That unwritten rule, I agree with. Uh, the next one, don't give unsolicited advice. Uh, honestly, I'll, I'll admit it. I've been guilty of this. Uh, when you know someone does something that's super frustrating over and over and over, and I, but this is only with people that I know pretty well. Then I've said like, hey, like you know, you keep doing the same thing over and over, and this is more of like a strategy thing that I get, I get frustrated about. If someone does something over and over and it just, you know, like it results in us losing the point every time, then I, I will say something. But that's only, you know, obviously if I've played with them a lot. Now, if you don't know the person and you are playing with them, and this is probably more of like an open play type of rule, but it also applies to people you play with a lot too. I mean, and I haven't done it lately, but uh, I understand why people do it, you know, it it's just like you see something over and over you're like oh i can help you fix it but I, you really just shouldn't you can ask hey do you mind if i give you some advice on something and if they say yes then go ahead if they say no just go on with your day that's what i've done now uh when i do want to say something i i think it's just a lot more respectful to ask if you, you can give them advice but at the end of the day i've learned you know from people giving me unsolicited advice I uh, don't really want it, you know, unless they ask it in that respectful way, like, hey, do you mind if I point something else, uh, point something out to you? And yeah, most people are not receptive to it. So just, I would just steer clear of it and, you know, just, just to be on the safer side. <laughs> um, this is the, this is one that, uh, this next one, uh, say nice run if someone scores more than three points on, uh, one, one side out. So... I didn't really – this is the first time I've heard it. I've been playing for over three years now. First time I heard it two weeks ago, someone's like, oh, you didn't say nice run. And I was like, uh, I really didn't know I had to say that. And they said, yeah, it's it's pretty respectful to say that. And I said, oh, well, sorry about that. Uh, nice run. So I think this one is just, you know, I mean, there's so many little things that you're trying to remember while you're playing. I don't think this is necessary, but, you know, good to say if you if you think about it. But come on, I mean, do we really have to say nice run if you score three points or like what's a what's a run? Two points, three points. I mean, I would assume three points, but I'm I'm not I'm not for it. Uh, but fine if you say it, and I do say it sometimes. It's just I don't think you should feel obligated to say it. Uh, this one is kind of like this one's hard. Don't play singles on public courts if uh, people are waiting. I personally don't really like playing singles, and I understand that uh, not many people play singles, but I think that people should be allowed to play singles if that's what they want to play. If the pub if there are court rules, of course, follow the court rules, but if the court rules just say that the courts are first come, first serve, or that you have to rotate, I don't see why you can't play singles. I mean, if that's what your game is, maybe s there are some people that only play singles, so like, why should they be excluded from using the courts if they want to play singles? That's So that one, I, I get both ways. You know, if you got to follow the court rules, you got to follow the court rules, but I think you should be allowed to play singles uh, if the court rules allow for it, even if people are waiting. You know, finish your game, move on. Uh, paddle tap at the end of games. I mean, I'm fine with it. Uh, I, I do it. I turn my paddle around, usually tap the handle. Um, uh, also okay. If you don't want to do it, I'm fine with it too. You know, not, you know, most sports, if you finish the game, you, you know, even like basketball, if you finish a game and you got people rotating out, you don't really go, you know, shake the hand or high five every person on the other team. Right. I mean, I mean, in this one, there's only two, you know, two people you need to paddle tap, so it's not a big deal. Uh, I'm fine either way. If you don't want to tap paddles with me, it's okay. If you do, I, I always offer the paddles out. Unless uh, one time, Saki, 
if you're if you're watching this, I'm sorry. But I did offer it. There was a there was a yellow jacket that was trying to attack me, so I had to delay the paddle tap. I don't like yellow jackets and uh, my safety. I have to put first there. <laughs> Next up, uh, let's see. Oh, yell ball. If your ball goes onto a, another court people are playing on. I mean, this one's pretty simple. The problem is, okay, say the ball is rolling towards their feet. No problem. Yell ball. The problem is if the ball is rolling behind someone and you think it's going to clear their court and not cause an issue, this one's kind of a judgment call. For me, as soon as the ball starts rolling on the court, I'll yell ball. I used to like let it roll like behind whatever, and I'm like, oh, if it's not going to be a danger to them, I don't want to say anything. But you know what? I don't want to be responsible for someone getting injured uh, because I had a bad judgment call. So I'll just call ball no matter what. Uh, if the ball was rolling past someone on their court, I don't want to be responsible for someone getting hurt. So I'll just 100% say ball. But I understand if someone gets mad. If you say ball when the ball is not going to affect their play and it's behind them. But, I mean, that's just something that you'll never you'll never make everyone happy. People will disagree uh, one way or another for forever on that one. So, I yell ball to be safe. I think that uh, whatever you want to do is fine. But I would just err on the side of caution and yell ball because I don't want to get injured. Just because a ball rolled on my court. There's no point that's worth it. I'm, you know, most of us are amateurs. The ball... Being on your court is not worth you getting injured. That's my opinion. Uh, next one, don't lob and drop shot seniors. If you're a younger player, it's fine. Uh, you know, like I see seniors lob and drop shot each other all the time. Uh, that's just part of the game. But like when I see someone in their young 20s, young 30s, mid 30s, 40s even, drop shot or lob seniors and it's just the automatic winner, I'm not for it. I don't do it myself, even though I'm not really a lob or a drop shotter. Sometimes I throw it in there, but I don't do it to see. It just if you know someone's going to have a mobility challenge, and it's that shot would be a winner on them, but not on others. Don't really feel great about it. I mean, what are you, what are you doing exactly? Like, what are you practicing? Uh, you, I guess you're practicing your lob, but it's not really. Uh, great for your game like maybe you're gonna think that lob is great because you you had a winner but you hit it on someone that you wouldn't be playing in a tournament i'm not for it i don't think it's cool to be doing that uh lobbing and drop shotting seniors i just think it's uh you know i don't know that's just how i feel i think most people probably feel that way but uh obviously people are doing it uh, i've seen it many times ah uh, so this last one uh, don't nasty Nelson someone. Now, that could be don't nasty Nelson someone in general. Or don't nasty Nelson someone you don't know well. Let me define what a nasty Nelson is real quick in case you don't know. A nasty Nelson is when you line up for a serve and you hit the opponent that is standing at the kitchen line. A nasty Nelson is when you line up to serve and you end up hitting the person that is standing at the non-volley zone line. So I personally feel that it's okay to nasty Nelson someone you know. You know, even in a tournament, it's part of the rules. People might frown on it. I've never tried it in a tournament. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing it. It's in the rules. You've seen it in the pros. I mean, it's already a high risk shot anyway but if you want to do it i don't have a problem with it i've been nasty nelson haven't been nasty nelson in the tournament but if someone did it to me i would be like great play yeah i would probably feel a little embarrassed or angry but once i got over that i mean that's part of the play i need to be paying attention when i'm up there now i wouldn't be nasty nelson people that you don't know i think that's pretty rude uh that's probably crossing a line, and also there is an injury risk. You could be hitting them in the eye. Now, me personally, I don't go for the Nasty Nelson too often. Uh, there's some people that I play with that like to do Nasty Nelsons, and I do have agreements with one guy. 
shout out to Saki again, that we will try to nasty Nelson each other only once per game when we play each other. So that's kind of, you know, that's just a fun game we have between us. We get one attempt per game to try to nasty Nelson. He did nasty Nelson me last. I'll give him credit for that. But I'll get you back. Don't worry. Uh, that's my last unwritten rule. If you have any other unwritten rules you think uh, you should talk about, let me know. Uh, you know, it's just one of the, I mean, that's the problem with unwritten rules try to write them all down help the newer players learn some things that might be expected from them but i don't think that you have to do all these unwritten rules they're unwritten for a reason they're not the same in every place it's really hard to follow all of the unwritten rules that's really my short segment today uh i plan oh yeah one other thing the paddle tier list you know <laughs> i knew that when doing a paddle you do any type of rankings thing and you're going to have people that disagree with you, of course, right? This should have been higher. This should have been lower, blah, blah, blah. I mean, even when I go back and look at it, as you know, I was saying in the, the paddle tier list, I could make arguments for a lot of companies to move up or down a tier, or, you know, whichever way. And, you know, at the end of the day, rankings are just for fun. They don't mean anything. So always keep that in mind. So I think I'm going to do like a living and breathing tier list and i'll try to update it every three to six months and i'm going to do a part two probably soon where i add a whole bunch of companies that uh i left out the first time just one <coughs> one there is one company i really forgot about that i had the image for i had the write-up for and everything and that was neonic uh I talked to david we decided that they would be an a tier uh, especially with their Prime X coming out. So we'll have to see, you know, they have a flow prime. So they have a hybrid shape power paddle and a wide body power paddle coming out. And we'll have to see like the actual performance on those. And we'll, we've, I think he's actually played with it, but I have it. If those are really, really good, they might be S tier. That was the one company that I really wanted to mention because that was one I had done a review on recently and somehow forgot. Uh, to put it in the paddle tier list there's a lot of other smaller companies that want that a lot of people are commenting about to add and at some point there's not one person that can put all these companies in a tier list so i'm going to try to bring on uh maybe two people next time uh you know david from tickle my pickle and hopefully we can get another reviewer on here that's had a wide range of companies and we can add to that tier list and hopefully make some more people happy more people angry who knows but yeah that's that's kind of the plan for the tier list so i will try to get that uh a tier list link that you could go make your own tier list uh you know with the companies that you've hit with or just you know change around mine just play around with it if that's something you want to do now as far as the future of this podcast i am going to do it weekly i'm going to shoot for sunday night every week as the release point for the podcast that's just what i feel is missing it seems like some people do you know there's like tuesday wednesday monday whatever but it doesn't seem like anyone's really get gets that monday morning so that's just the spot i'm going for in the future i plan on talking about a wide range of topics whatever i feel like talking about if you have any suggestions I'm always down to hear what you're thinking and of course i mean we'll be talking pickleball paddles you know every week but that won't really be like the main focus it's just kind of like hey I'm gonna talk pickleball paddles because that's what i mainly make videos about but i want this podcast to be something where i can just talk about anything pickleball related and keep it fun as far as me having a co-host i don't think i'll have a single co-host at the moment i'll be bringing on different people i hope to bring on david from tickle my pickle again as he joined me on the first episode so he's one person that's already been on who I hope we'll be coming back and then I'll probably be bringing on different pickleball reviewers that I talk to and hopefully, you know, get a good rotation of different people coming on to join me and then bring on some different people from the pickleball industry and then also probably bring on some people that I uh, play from friends that I've made playing pickleball. So, you know, if anyone watching this, uh, that plays pickleball with me currently and you're interested in being a co-host for an episode, let me know so that I don't have to ask you and you can just tell <laughs> you can just tell me. But uh, yeah, I will probably be asking some people to, uh, you know, if they want to come join me for an episode or two here and there. Uh, that way that no one has like a, you know, 
I can in it at the end of the day I will always do a solo podcast if something falls through as I, I did in this one because I waited too long to uh, ask someone but you know I can definitely fill the time this one's going to be a shorter one just because that's kind of the main stuff I had to talk about actually impressed usually I go longer when I'm talking uh just by myself, I can I can really start going on and on. But yeah, that's my plan. I'm going to bring on different co-hosts. Maybe eventually we'll have a single co-host that uh, ends up being the permanent co-host. But right now, my plan is to bring on different people. Uh, yeah, I've got so I've got people in mind to come on, and then uh, you know, if anyone that I don't have in mind, just reach out to me uh, if you're interested in coming on as a co-host someday, and you have a good topic that you want to bring. And we'll talk about it. So that's all I have for today. Uh, next review coming up is the Paddletech ESQ and Italy Waters. Those are fun. They are raising their prices. I did just find out they're raising their price to $249.99. Uh, so it's going to be $224.99, I believe, uh, after the discount codes, all drive, no drop. Uh, and then they're also going to be not having the 10% off anymore after November 25th. So if you want those paddle techs, now's the time to buy uh, because the 10% off code is going away after November 25th. I imagine they'll bring it back, but uh, I don't exactly know when and I couldn't really get a, a clear answer exactly why they were getting rid of the discount. So they're raising their price and getting rid of the discount after November 25th. Uh, the price raise goes effective October 1st. The discount code will go away November 25th. So sad news there. Uh, I hope they bring the discount back. I don't know if they will. Besides that, ripples are coming up, hopefully in October. All the other stuff I talked about, the Chorus uh, Super Core and the Next Gen Valor Pro and the Nexus Pro Star, whatever, whatever, those are coming up. And then we have the Neonic Flow Prime and the Neonic Force Prime. I think Prime X is what they're both called. Those are going to be power paddles from Neonic. So those are very uh, exciting. I have not got those yet, but hopefully we will get them soon. Uh, oh! Last thing I forgot to mention, the Dinkmaster Pro. So, got the Dinkmaster Pro yesterday. Set it up. Going to have a review on that. It is a little heavier. Uh, I think the board is like 50 pounds, so just keep that in mind because you do have to lift that up to put it on. So, if you are not comfortable lifting up 50 pounds, and this is a little awkward, you might want to get two people to do it. But the Dinkmaster Pro is so far it's been a lot of fun my wife's been using it too it's a lot more fun than <laughs> and a lot more a lot better bounce than to say if you use your garage wall or your basement wall so i've been enjoying it a lot i've been i was using the course uh, super core on it and for dinking and hands drills and even you know doing some flicks it's very good so i really enjoyed it so far i'll have a review on that within the next couple of weeks but the dink master pro i just wanted to talk about that for a second i've enjoyed it i believe my code all drive down drop gets free shipping on that so if you're looking to order that go ahead and check that out go ahead and check that link in the description if you want to get it so far i've been impressed uh i know that most of like the gyms and um, indoor facilities usually have one of those so if you want to check one out i think you know most of them probably have the old one you can go check it out and see if it's something that you'd want to use at home but so far i have it in my garage bring it outside I, I plan to move it in the basement once it gets too cold to use out there but right now i've enjoyed it a lot uh i've, I've always been someone that's you know like messes around with the the hitting against the wall in the basement especially you know try out different tungsten tape setups try out different paddles and you know just practice i think that this one is going to be a huge winner for me and yeah so that's my quick thoughts on that i've only been using it for a day now so don't have too much detailed analysis to give on it but it took me about i would say it probably you could probably assemble it in about 20 minutes or less and it's really not too complicated and i have some good tips that i'll put in the review for assembly putting on the brackets on the side it's really the tricky part and i forgot to do something when i was assembling it that uh, i'll make sure you don't forget to do put in that flathead screw in the bracket sticking out before you put that bracket on which i'll show you in the video um, in the review but that's just a note in case you are 
getting it and assembling it. Besides that, I do not have anything else to talk about right now. Hopefully it stops raining so I can go play some pickleball tomorrow. But everyone, have a great week this week. Get ready for that October spooky season pickleball. Have a great day, and hopefully you get to play a ton of pickleball this week. Peace out.